the stories of mahabharata retold by shudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard how jayadratha tried to abduct draupadi and was punished and humiliated by the pandavas for his sinful act hearing about the unfortunate incident of draupadi's abduction Rishi Markandeya came to visit the Pandavas. Yudhishthir narrated him the incident and said, "Rishi Markandeya, I feel sorry for Draupadi. She sacrificed a lot for our sake. Draupadi saved us from slavery after I lost the game of dice with Duryodhan. She has been looking after us during our exile, and now." she had to suffer this humiliation from jayadrath do you know of any other woman who did so much for her husband as did draupadi markandeya said did you hear the story of savitri the pandavas gathered around and markandeya narrated the story of savitri In the olden days there lived a pious king named Aswapati in the kingdom of Madra With Lord Brahma's blessings Aswapati's queen gave birth to a beautiful girl named Savitri Savitri grew up to be a learned woman well versed in the scriptures Her strong and powerful personality made her parents proud but made it difficult to find any suitor. Men were too scared to propose her. The worried father Aswapati called Savitri and said, "My dear, it is my duty as your father to give your hand in marriage to a suitable man. Unfortunately, nobody is willing to accept you as their wife." you are wise and learned i believe if you look yourself you should be able to find the man you deserve savitri agreed with a team of advisers she mounted a chariot and left the palace looking for a husband few months later while aswapati was busy talking to rishi narada Savitri returned to the palace. Rishi Narada asked, "Where is your daughter coming from? She has grown up, and you should arrange for her marriage." The king said, "I had sent her to find a husband for herself. Tell me, dear, did you find someone?" Savitri paid her respects to Rishi Narada and her father. She sat down at Aswapati's feet and said, "Dumatsa Sen." was the king of salva due to some unfortunate event he went blind and his kingdom was taken over by his enemies dumatsa sen fled to the forest with his young boy and has been living there as a hermit ever since the boy has grown up to be a handsome young man his name is satyavan i have chosen him as my husband Rishi Narada nodded his head and said, "My dear Savitri, you made a mistake in selecting your husband. As a man, Satyavan is indeed suitable for you in all aspects. But his life is short. One year from now, he will breathe his last." King Aswapati knew Narada's prediction could never go wrong. He held Savitri's hand and said, "My dear daughter, you must find someone else." Savitri looked at her father and without batting an eyelid she said once i have accepted satyavan as my husband 
I cannot go back on my word. He may be short-lived, but he is my husband for life. Aswapati had no option but to hand over Savitri to Satyavan as his wife. Savitri went along with Satyavan and carried on all her duties as his wife. She took care of her parents-in-laws, looked after the cattle and made sure no harm could touch her family. But the thought of Satyavan's impending death never left her mind and she kept counting the days. Four days before the predicted date of Satyavan's death, Savitri announced that she would go on a fast for the next three days. Her father-in-law, Dhumatsa Sen, tried to dissuade her. My dear, three days of fasting will be difficult for a princess like you. Savitri assured him, Don't worry, I should be able to handle it. On the day of Satyavan's death, Savitri finished all her chores and rituals before noon. Her parents-in-law said, Now you should break your fast. I will break my fast after sunset, replied Savitri. In the afternoon, Satyavan picked up his axe and was about to leave the hermitage to fetch some firewood. Savitri came to him and said, I want to come with you. Satyavan was surprised to hear this. He said, You have never been to the forest. The path is difficult and perilous. Besides, you are tired from fasting. You won't be able to bear the strain. Savitri was adamant. She said, I am not tired from fasting and you cannot stop me from going with you. Satyavan gave up. He said, Well then, Ask my parents for their permission. If they agree, you can come with me. Dumatsa Sen was worried for her but didn't refuse. Savitri and Satyavan went out to the forest to fetch wood. After walking for hours, they arrived deep inside the forest. Along the way, Savitri did not move her sight of her husband for a single moment. She was worried. If the prediction was correct, Satyavan would drop dead any moment. Satyavan stopped in front of a huge tree, raised his axe and began to chop it down. Soon his body began to sweat, but not from the labor. Satyavan felt a shooting pain in his head. He grabbed his forehead and said, Ah, oh, oh, Savitri, Savitri, I am not feeling well. I feel my head is about to burst open. Ah, oh, oh, Savitri, 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 I cannot bear this pain any longer. Satyavan couldn't stand. He dropped down on his knees. Savitri sat down beside her husband, held him and said, Lie down, Satyavan, rest your head on my lap. Satyavan lied down with his head on Savitri's lap and became motionless. Savitri knew his last moment has arrived. Narada's prediction came true. Moments later, Savitri saw a huge dark man standing next to them. Dressed in crimson clothes and gold jewellery, the man looked at Satyavan with his bloodshot eyes. Savitri gently put Satyavan's head to the ground and stood up. With folded palms she asked, Your looks tell me you must be some god. Please be kind and introduce yourself. The man looked at her and with a cold voice he said, I am Yama, the god of death. Your husband Satyavan is dead and I have come to fetch his soul. Yama pulled out a trap from his belt and held it on Satyavan's chest. The soul left Satyavan's body and entered the trap. Yama shut the trap, put it back in his belt 
and began to walk away Savitri didn't cry neither did she stay with the body she began to follow Yama Yama noticed and stopped he turned towards Savitri and said why are you following me you should go back and arrange for your husband's funeral and last rites Savitri said it is my duty to follow my husband wherever he goes or wherever he is taken that's what the scriptures say yama was taken aback by the answer he had never encountered someone like savitri he smiled and said you are right but humans cannot follow me you must stop let me grant you a wish ask anything you want except satyavan's life Savitri said Lord give my father in law his eyesight back Yama agreed Your wish will be fulfilled now go back you look tired Why should I be tired said Savitri I am with my husband and I am never tired of my husband's companionship wherever he goes I go Lord you are the wisest of the wise and it is said the companionship of the wise should always be pursued ha, you speak well ask another boon anything except your husband's life let my father in law get back his kingdom so be it now stop following me and go back yama resumed his walk savitri kept on following she said lord you maintain the balance of life on earth you take them away when their time comes not because you wish so but as per their karma that is your duty you know people on earth are weak and mortal they have no control over their destiny wise men are kind to those who surrender even if they are not a friend your words come from the bottom of your heart and it's a pleasure to listen ask another boon anything but satyavan's life and then you leave me alone yama was getting impatient i wish to be a child of satyavan a handsome son said savitri without batting an eyelid so be it you will have a handsome son now go back yama increased his pace savitri didn't quit she ran after yama and said Wise men always follow the path of dharma they don't repent after giving a gift their generosity is never wasted prayers and wishes to them don't go unfulfilled they are our saviors you are right go ahead ask for another boon my last and final boon savitri paused for a while and then spoke lord You have rewarded me with your boons because you felt I deserve them. Now I ask for my final reward. Please give me back my husband's life. Without him I cannot enjoy any gift you give me. You granted me Satyavan's son. Without Satyavan that wish shouldn't be fulfilled either. Grant me my wish and your reward won't go in vain. Yama knew he has been caught in his own trap. He smiled and said, "You got me. Well, so be it. I will release Satyavan and he will live again. Enjoy your long life with your husband." Yama released Satyavan's life force from his trap and walked away. Savitri went back to her husband and took Satyavan's head back on her lap. She gently rocked him and said, "Wake up, darling. It is getting dark. We should go back to our hermitage." Satyavan woke up and said, "How long I have been sleeping? Yes, yes, we we should go back. Father must be worried." Markandeya stopped and said, The next morning Dumatsa Sen got back his eyesight. Messengers from his lost kingdom came and informed him 
that the people of Salwa has overthrown the evil ruler and now they want Gimatsa Sen back on the throne. So you see Yudhishthir, a powerful and pious woman who loves her husband can work miracles. Draupadi is as powerful and wise as Savitri. She can do wonders for you. Yudhishthir and his brothers knelt down before Markandeya to pay their respects. Draupadi stood aside with a faint smile on her face. The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bamak. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.